Good afternoon, good morning, everyone, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for watching this live video. I'm here with uh, Talal Gondal. He's from the UK, and he'll tell you more about himself later. But why are we here today? Well, I'm hosting these Facebook and LinkedIn Live because I want to share about other people that are in the uh, wellness and, and wellness industry, health and wellness industry, but also people that are making a difference in our world, people that are affecting other people's life in a good, positive way. And whenever I encounter these people, I ask them if they want to be on my schedule to, to be part of these live, because I think it's absolutely essential that people are being known. So if you're watching, just say hi, say tap hello in the chat or say hello where you're from. And uh, also, um, I call this right now, it's episode number nine. And it's, um, I call that it's all good. Looks, look who's here for a chat. The reason I call it it's all good, it's pretty simple it's because my favorite cup, it's orange. I like orange and it's all good. That's usually how whenever there's a problem, a conflict or something that doesn't go that well, I always say it's all good, you know, because in the end, we never know how things are going to turn out. We're just watching, we're just listening to life and say, hey, it's all good. Whatever comes out of it will come out of it. And that's why I call that it's all good. And so today I'm here with uh, Tala Gondal. And Tala is the author of the number one international bestseller book, Turbocharged Networking, which share the message that care, value, and service are the three key elements to building human connection. And human connection is critical to networking and building authentic long-term relationship. Talal is also a speaker and his mission is to help people cultivate the mindset and develop the skill set to become world-class networker in their personal life and business lives. Talal's super passion are building relationship equity, creating holistic success, and cultivating a savage mindset. Talal is also a maths lecturer and a box boxing coach, and enjoy reading nonfiction and watching UFC. Hmm. He also loves going to the gym, driving fast cars, and has a unhealthy relationship with protein shake. Welcome to Protein. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with I you on it. that. I gotta have one every day. Talal lives in. How do you say that? Leicester. Leicester. Leicester, Leicester England, yeah. and with his wife, two kids, and two cats. I love cat lover people. So welcome to my. Uh, it's all good. Chat and. Do you have anything else you'd love to say about yourself? Tell me, tell us a little bit more that was not in there. Well, first of all, Denise, thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is an absolute pleasure. I'm really excited about this. Um, and uh, what else can I add to that? I mean, you, you've done a really awesome intro for me already. Um, I, I can share with you that I have a real sweet tooth. And so my favorite breakfast in the morning, every single day, it's really boring, right? I have the same breakfast every morning. But my favorite breakfast in the morning is to have a piece of toast with vanilla coffee. And what I put on the toast is crunchy peanut butter and a little bit of honey. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's pretty good. And when do you get your smoothies? Oh, the smoothie. Okay, so the smoothie has a whole thing. I make a smoothie every single morning and I take it with me, right? I also make a protein shake and I take it with me. Uh, because when, when I'm actually teaching, etc., cetera, I, I, I can't actually open up my lunchbox, take out a chicken breast and my salad and start eating it in the middle of a lecture. But so what I do, it, <laughs> but yeah. drinking, yeah, drinking a protein shake and a drinking yeah. smoothie, that, that's yeah. okay. So I, I always have those with me and, and a bottle of water. So um, I always have those things with me. Wonderful. So I'm really curious. I know you launched your book last summer, if I remember well, right? Well, remember actually, it was, it was this summer. It's uh, It launched on the 3rd of August, so just summer, a couple last, months ago. Yeah. A couple months ago. That's what I meant. Sorry. Just less like six there. So tell me more. Like, What prone you to decide to put people together and put a book, a book together? Tell me more about that. How did the idea come from? So 
the backstory to that, Denise, is the fact that we, we're going to have to go back in time. We're going to have to go back all the way to 2015. Okay, that's okay. where it starts. Six years so, ago. That. Yes, yes. So we're going to go back in time. <laughs> okay. And uh, in 2015, I was a math teacher. And I woke up on a morning in June. It was a bright, sunny morning. It was wonderful, great weather, which is very rare here in England. But I thought, hey, this is fantastic. I got ready. I was, you know, in a good mood. And I got to work. I went in. I was just setting my stuff down. I was setting my laptop up. You know, it's, it's, it's just good vibes. You know, it's looking good, etc. cetera. And um, I, got, I got called into the manager's office. And I went there, and everybody else was also there. And what we got told is that they're closing down the whole center, and everybody's lost their job. Oh. Out of the blue. Yeah. Didn't expect that. Didn't know anything about it. So immediately, obviously, you're in shock. I was in shock. I was like, well, you know, where did you go from here? Like, this is completely unexpected. We had no warning about this. And they're shutting down the whole center. Everybody's lost their job. Everybody started panicking. People are crying. People are really upset. People are, you know, calling their, their families, their friends, etc. And uh, so it seemed chaos. And I was in shock, too. And I wasn't doing, didn't really know what to do. And what I started to do was I actually started to reach out to the people that I knew at the time. Um, and uh, I just said, hey, I just heard this news. This is what's happened. I uh, don't know what to do next, et cetera. And, what, you know, in those kind of situations, what you hope is that you reach out to people, you tell them about, you know, what you're going through, you share with them, and then maybe somebody, can, you know, share some words of encouragement, but also maybe there's there's a chance that somebody you know actually has some connections. They can point you in the right direction. They can, you know, point you to the right opportunity, et cetera. And so in my case, um, what I got was a lot of, uh, you know, the, the similar sort of messages which said, Hey, really sorry to hear that. You know, uh, I'm really sorry that that this has happened to you. But uh, you know, don't worry. Everything will work out in the end. Just apply for more jobs. I was like, well, you know, this sound advice. Why didn't I think of that? I should have thought of that. You know, <laughs> I should be thinking about applying more jobs. Um, so obviously, I, I I did apply for more jobs. But my point was that that was my initial encounter with mm -hmm. this idea that hey, the people that I'm hanging around with. Um, don't seem to have the uh, access to the opportunities, to ideas, to knowledge, and to other people that could have helped me in this situation. You know, I'm hanging on people yeah. who are, you know, maybe at a similar sort of stage in life. They uh, have achieved the same sort of, you know, level of success, yeah. and um, they just don't have access to anything farther. So that was my first encounter with that. And then I decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to do something about it. I, I can't let this just hang. Um, this is obviously it's a critical situation. And, you know, I, 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 I learned this lesson from it. I need to implement. I need to do something about it. And so I just decided to surround myself with more people. Um, yeah. more successful people, people who are ahead of me, people who are, you know, doing amazing things in the world, people who have, uh, you know, access to more opportunities and more knowledge and more technology and more ideas, all those things. And the first thing I did was just went on Facebook and started joining Facebook groups. And that then led me to uh, kind of connect with some amazing people all over, all over the world. Um, there was like personal development groups, right? Um, yeah. And uh, so I found out about all these people who are doing these amazing things. And uh, they're helping their communities. They're doing charity work. You know, they're, they're starting, you know, the different sort of projects and businesses. And they're coaching people and they're mentoring people. And I was just fascinated. I was like, wow, there's so many good people, which yeah. you never hear about in the news, by the way. You know, new, news is all just gloom and doom and chaos. So I was like, well, there's so many amazing people who, who have this drive, the similar sort of thing that, you know, I want to do as well. I want to connect with these people, learn from them. And then I want to make a bigger impact. Um, and uh, that kind of opened that, up some some vision for you, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then I thought, OK, so there's there's more to this. You know, I'm learning all these things. There's so much more for me to learn. Uh, but what would be awesome is that if I allowed other people to have access to these conversations if mm -hmm. I let other people join in and so I started to do so you know something very similar to what we're doing over here like you know this is a live call and so I started doing a YouTube show where I started interviewing people about yeah. their stories about you know what they went through and what sort of impact they're trying to make in the world their vision their habits their practices etc so I started interviewing them and because I was learning from them but I, I was sharing with the other people as well and that, mm -hmm. that was just like a hobby I started but uh, that carried on and 
even though I didn't become an overnight YouTube superstar, right? Okay. <laughs> what did happen was that I made some amazing friends. I made some amazing yeah. connections, yeah. right? Some really successful people and, um, you know, people who are top experts, top influencers, top thought leaders um, in, in, in their fields. And um, that really got me in, you know, in, um, um, you can say, um, I, I was almost shocked, right? I was just, why would they want to talk to me? Like, you know, I, I, I come from an education background. I'm a mass lecturer, right? You know, talk to me about fractions. I'll rock your world. But, you know, I don't come from a business background. I don't come from a sales background. I don't come from an entrepreneurship background. Why are they talking to me? I don't have any money to give them. Why are they talking to me? Um, but yeah, so I, I found some amazing friendships and found some amazing connections. And um, what I then realized then when COVID hit, I was like, okay, I, I need to do something with this. What, what can I do with everything that I have learned? What can I do with everything that, um, you know, I have, I have uh, you know, learned and, and the insights I've had, the things that I have, practices that I've developed, the systems that I have developed, what can I do with all this? And so that was the light bulb moment, Denise, where I was like, okay, you know what would be really cool if I actually wrote it down in a book? I wrote a book. <laughs> Why not write a book? And uh, so, you know, that, that's like, you know, I, I read dreamer you know they're like yeah thinking like oh i'll write a book someday and you know so i was like yeah i'll write a book someday yeah. and uh, so i started you know writing something just on the weekends and and uh, you know in the evening sometimes i got a chance i'll, I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put a few ideas down nothing serious yeah yeah um but that, that again just you know because i knew so many amazing people um you know i shared my 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 idea with them hey i'm writing a book and i'm doing this it just kind of grew and gained more and more momentum and more and me more people got involved and uh, so you know i launched my book on the 3rd of august okay here it is turbocharged mm -hmm. networking um and uh you know it became an international bestseller and it's not just me it's not just my insights and my my ideas and my systems and and my sort of like uh, principles in this book right um the book right 20 super achievers in mm -hmm. the world okay they're also they have also contributed to this book wonderful um, so it's uh, it's it's uh, you know some some of my closest friends are also included in the book as their insights as their ideas as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the full story, <laughs> and well, it, it resulted cool. ended up here in this book. Well, that's fabulous, and uh, and like even before you you completed the book, you were already I think if I understand well, you're already doing some speaking gigs and talking to to other people because you did your you did what I do now right interviewing people and uh, broadcasting people but also you were interview and you were and did you go back into teaching maths yeah yeah I, I still my full-time job is that I'm actually a math lecturer I teach math yeah. on the yeah. week, weekends I'm a boxing coach so I keep teach kids boxing yeah. um and uh, uh you know I also uh, I'm an author and a speaker now so you know it's That's uh awesome. It's, it's, it's a busy schedule, but <laughs> what I can share with you is the fact that, um, you know, before, you know, this, this is the, this is the thing I really want to share with, uh, with everybody who's here. And it's the fact that if you want to get access to ideas, opportunities, knowledge, technology, that is, you know, beyond what you already possess, then you need to connect with new people. Mm -hmm. because it's people who have access to all of those things you're looking for right so what i call the accelerators of life you know so that's technology that's knowledge that is uh, you know um your uh, resources that's money that's opportunities they're all you know accelerators of life they will help you accelerate in your life in your business any area of your life any area of your business these things will help you accelerate okay and i talk about it in my book um but the one thing the master key to unlock it all it's actually building relationships with other yeah, people. Absolutely. It's getting to know more people because people have access to, you know, those technologies that you're looking for. They already have access to knowledge and opportunities that you're searching for. They already have the money that you're looking for. So it's really people you're after. You know, everything yeah. else is 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 kind of like a, uh, you can say a, a, a secondary, um, almost like a, um, you know, a, a, a result oh, of, of your initial yeah. effort to connect with people, right? That comes yeah. second. Initially, yeah. you just need to connect with people and, and, and form those relationships. And also what I, what I talk a lot also when I network is, is the no trust and like factor, right? Like get to know someone, get to trust them, get to like them. 
and get it reverse also get them to know you to like you and to trust you because once once you build that once you build that relationship with someone where you become a trusted advisor or you become someone that they know they can count on you if anything is is needed then then if they hear of anybody that needs something that you can provide well you'll be the first one that comes to mind because because they say hey you know talal does that and yes you know call him to talk to him because he'll be a great you know advisor for you or he can assist you or maybe i'm sure he knows someone that can do that because you want to be top of mind when in your network for a resource person for somebody that can help others and and that can only come by trusting the people that you are surrounding yourself with and being able to have that exchange right like building relationship is the key for sure like i like what you say like um in your book like it shared the message that care value and service are the three element of building human connection and human connection is critical to network and building authentic long term relationship like people that are just looking into oh what can i get out of that person they're most likely not going to go anywhere in their own life right it's all about interconnecting people and sharing as opposed to taking right yeah absolutely i think one of the great things that we uh share as human beings um is 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 our connection with each other and i think that that's that's so precious that no amount of money no amount of you know resources or or you know um say your um wealth can actually even begin to um substitute for just one of your relationships yeah. that human connection that you build is like the most precious thing that you will possess in this life that's your most precious possession in this life your relationships okay and your relationships are based on human connection right so we we really need to flip the script i think for a lot of people it's about flipping the script if you are just chasing money if you're just chasing a sale if you're just chasing a client if you're just chasing you know uh resources or knowledge or ideas you know that that you can get gain from somebody Mm -hmm. then you are really limiting yourself because the problem is that even though you might get something from that person in the short term you cannot actually benefit from that person in the long term mm -hmm. so to really benefit from the person in the long term to really bring them into your world so they actually continue to be there for you to advise you to mentor you to support you to to kind of uplift you to push you forward to you know give you the advice and the mentorship that you need to actually succeed in life your business whatever you're looking to do you need that person to stay in your orbit and to bring them into your orbit you need to build that human connection it is so critical we really need to think about flip, flipping that script that instead of actually what can i uh, gain from the person it's more about what can i give to the person so they are willing to stay in my yeah. orbit yeah so what you're saying is actually giving more than when you ex expect to receive like being more at service so it's yeah. more like a it's not a you know how they say give and take i hate that term give and take right because it's not for me it's always give and receive like i don't want to take anything out of anybody if they want to give me then i'll be happy to receive it right but not go grab and take something out of them and say thank you bye you know and send them on their way so it's all about being able to to in sales they always say give more than what expected from you right like give more give like give until you think you can't give no more and then give some more you know <laughs> Yeah, I, I think there's there's definitely um, the the idea of giving is really powerful. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, when 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 it comes to business, I think people have, find it difficult to translate because business is all about obviously you know and some sort of exchange. Mm -hmm. There needs to be an exchange, and yeah. so the idea of giving and taking, um, I think, needs to be looked at in a slightly different light. And I think exchange might be a better way to of looking at it rather than giving and taking. Yeah. Right. I'm giving and they're taking or they're giving and I'm taking. Well, how about we just ex exchange when the time is right? 
when 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 we are both are clear on you know what what we can actually give to the other person that will be beneficial to them then how about we exchange and the exchange is on value right exchange mm -hmm. about care exchange is about service versus giving and taking which could be about money which could be about opportunities which could be about you know resources and knowledge and any yeah. of the other yeah. things that we look, we talk about but most of the time people chase those then that's what people are actually looking for right um, and I think in the business world, it's, it's sometimes difficult to translate, like I, I can just give and give and give and somehow I'll gain back. And I think in the business world, uh, if you're a, you know, in a sales professional or if you are, uh, you know, a, 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 an entrepreneur or a business owner, then I believe the best, better way to uh, have this dialogue is to use the word exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah. Because, you know, like, of course, if there's a, financial transaction yeah well it's an exchange of either product or service towards some monetary you know exchange right like i, I i'm going to provide to you this service in exchange to you know a little bit of money on the on the way back right and to see it i like the word exchange for sure it makes a lot of sense yeah, I think it's more empowering. I think when we talk about giving and taking and sales and, you know, yeah. going back and forth and transactions and, you know, all those things, um, I, I think it actually, you know, disempowers you. Um, I think the, the empowerment is business is critical to your business success. I think you need to empower yourself in mm -hmm. business if you and, and in life, you know, in any area of your life, you need to empower yourself if you want to have success. And the one of the best ways to empower yourself is to maybe focus on your internal dialogue you know i i, I have a very good uh, friend her rachel uh, her name is rachel randolph and and she hangs on linkedin and she's a communication coach and she talks about this a lot you're you know actually um in a way um looking at your internal dialogue that empowers you so you can actually succeed in life because it's the internal dialogue that actually limits you in many ways um and so definitely in business i think that's a big one uh, in other areas of life too, in, per, in your personal life for sure. But definitely in business, I think that's that idea sometimes gets overlooked because we're too busy, you know, trying to base everything on performance and KPIs and you know targets and goals and you know all those things. And yeah. I think the idea is that you will be able to achieve all those things, your KPIs and goals and targets and everything else you're trying to do, if you have fully empowered yourself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's what I work with people, right? And, and that's why mental fitness and positive intelligence is about yeah. what type of languages do you have in the back of your mind? Like when you talk to someone, are you listening halfway and already thinking of a rhetoric answer? You know, what am I going to tell in return? Or are you fully engaged into the relationship? Are you, you know, the, the negative talk that we have, oh, I'm, I, I, why didn't I close this sales and I'm so, you know, inadequate and so stupid or whatever people tell themselves. And, and then sometimes the voice that we hear are not necessarily ours, but are the voice of, you know, maybe our employers, maybe our mother, our fathers, who knows what, right? Our math teacher that, you know, <laughs> might tell us, I doubt you do that. But I heard a story, somebody was, had the math teacher when they were in, you know, elementary like young like seven eight years old and the math teacher was telling them like the teacher was saying them oh you're never going to be good at math don't even bother right but that stick to that person and years and years later that person says, ah i'm not good in maths anyway you know like mm -hmm. we're, like i'll take a calcul calculator and but these are little things that are imprinted in our mind that we carry through and what are we telling ourselves how can we eliminate those those vocabulary that are running you know like a broken disc a lot of time we keep repeating those stuff but if we change that in a more positive and supportive way and how can we enhance our relationship by having more compassionate talk with ourselves then that will radiate towards others also so powerful. I, I love how you put that, Denise. That is so amazing. And I know you do a lot of work around this. So, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I, I think we will definitely, you know, be able to share quite a lot of back and forth on this. Uh, yeah. But definitely, I believe that if you want to have success in your um, other relationships, you know, whether that's your business relationship, business, you know, relationships in your personal life, it all starts with you, mm -hmm. right? You're, you're the anchor there, right? With, with the, the, the common 
denominator with all those relationships it's you it starts with you right like okay it starts with this guy um so you know we really need to make sure that uh, we are having you know we, we're constantly reviewing uh, and checking with it with ourselves of what kind of relationship we have mm -hmm. right what kind of relationship we have to, with ourselves because if we have um, a relationship that is, you know, based on um, just super superficial lies, okay, or, or, or things that um, are actually we tell ourselves, um, you know, just because nobody else can hear them, we keep telling those things to ourselves, okay, repeating them again and again and again, and like you said, they form a pattern, yeah, right? They're ingrained. There's like a broken record. It's just constantly playing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so that comes out. People sense that in us, whether we say that or not, whether other people can't hear our thoughts or not, it comes out. Yeah. And there's actually research on it. And, and um, I talk about it in my book as well. And uh, I believe that it was the University of New South Wales that did some research um, on this, uh, um, on, on intuition. And what they found is that we as human beings have very highly evolved sense of intuition. Mm -hmm. And that sense of intuition only gets better with experience and exposure. And believing in it, right? Like listening to it, I imagine. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So by listening to more people, by talking to them, we actually sharpen our sense of intuition. So when somebody's being fake, when somebody's putting it on, you know, when, when somebody's not being genuine, when you know that they're not 100% committed to something, you sense it. it. They don't have to say anything, okay? It's almost like, a, you know, a, at an energetic level or a spiritual level, you can just sense it. You can just like, there's something wrong, you know? Maybe you can't explain it very well. Maybe you can't put words to it, okay? but you can sense something okay and that's so powerful to 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 just just recognize the fact that actually you know what the way i show up in the world genuinely has an impact whether i am actually you know consciously not you know kind of showing up and 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 trying to put put up something right put up a put up a facade or mm -hmm. not if i'm put, consciously putting up a facade you know it, it doesn't generally has an impact because people sense there's something behind the facade. Something's not right. Something's wrong. They can yeah. sense it. Of course. Yeah. I think when, when we learn to trust our intuition, we're able to, to have a personal better quality of life because too often we, we muffle that intuition, right? We feel that something's wrong. But then we, especially in, in some business relationship, obviously, but personal relationship, right? You'll have like some, I've known women that get out, get, get out with a man and then, uh, and then the relationship goes further. There's things that are tweaking. There's like, oh, I'm not so sure, but they go in anyway because I can change him. Well, well, the thing that you thought that were, you know, not working well and you could see that it's on the surface but not really there and your intuition telling you to back away but your heart's like oh but i love him you know <laughs> and then it goes right in and then you end up separating or in divorce four or five years later because you didn't trust your intuition so if you did then you mm. would be better off you know without and and business the same thing like there's people you know that there's this thing if it's too good to be true sometimes it's too good to be true our intuition is like that can't be real, you know. Yeah. That can be a best, the, a good investment because that seems way too easy. Sometimes it is, but a lot of time you have to follow your intuition and know where things are leading you because it's um, can be duped all the time, right? Absolutely, and and you're so right that both in our business relationships and in our personal relationships, mm -hmm. um, our emotions can sometimes blind us to the truth. Our intuition is there to help us and guide us and make you know intelligent decisions yeah. good intelligent decisions but yeah. we almost um get you know tied up with our emotions so much that we um you know create this self-doubt and we just say oh no no no, that's not right you know I, I, I surely what i'm feeling must be true and so actually i want to at some point write an article about this okay um and um you know i, I want to i want to share my thoughts on this uh but i'll, I'll share a few few things here right now yeah which please. are the fact that I think emotions 
emotions are like traffic lights. And I think that's how we really maybe need to think about them is the fact that you sh we should check in with our emotions to see if everything's okay. Do I need to stop? Do I need to review this, right? Do I need to go? Like, you know, what's going on? So they're almost like a traffic light system, but I don't think they are the final, they should be, you know, our final decision should be made on based on them, right? Um, we we shouldn't treat our emotions as um the 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 final law, right? Like this is it. This is this is this is the law. Mm -hmm. This is the uh the 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 right thing to do, um, just based on how we're feeling. Um, I think intuition definitely plays a huge part into it. And while emotions are important and we feel them all the time because we're all humans and there are times yeah. where we mess things up and that is okay. But I think generally we need to think about emotions more almost like a traffic light system uh, versus as kind of like, oh no, this is it. This is the seal deal. This is the final thing. Um, and this, this, is, this is going to be uh, how I'm going to react to this situation or this, okay. is the, this, is the, this is the choice that I'm going to make, et cetera. Yeah. That remind me of uh, Matthew McConaughey and wrote the book Green Light. I don't know if you read it or listened to it, but he said that whenever there's something that went super well in his life, that things align, like the universe line up something, you know, it's, it's, it's mind is like green light, meaning that, yeah, that's a goal. Like it's, it's, it's everything worked out and things when, you know, as I best that I could have, and he called that green light. So the three light system reminded me of that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I think emotions are there to um, help help us, um, you know, kind of see if things are not going on because we're so busy. We almost kind of go into a tunnel vision, right? On a day to day basis, if you think about it, we're kind of in a tunnel vision. We're just charging ahead, like wake up, go through your routine, go through the day, deal with people, etc. Come back, you know, do the things that you need to do. Then you go to bed, then you wake up, then you kind of yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's like autopilot. And so the emotions, I believe, are there to kind of help us gauge how things are actually going overall, right? Mm -hmm. So you can check in with your emotions um, and uh, have, uh, have, a, have a bit of a, you know, quiet time just checking in and seeing, you know, how, how are things right now? You know, does this, this feel right? Is something not, you know, not going too well? Do I need to review this? Do I need to take a break? Do I need to stop? Like you can check in with your emotions for a, a little bit of, uh, you can say, uh, maintenance, TLC, right? But overall, I think the final decision you really have to base on, you, you know, what's, what's actually happening. Right, the truth, the facts, yeah. um, your intuition. Yeah, I think the, th that's the better way to make decisions. Yeah, yeah. You talked about the routine and the daily. You know, in French, we say metro boulot de dos, which is you know, like you you take this guy, you take the the metro, you go you go to work, and then you come back home, you go to sleep, you go back to work, you go back home, get to sleep, you know, and it's without questioning. And but what I what I found with my my coaching is that within that cycle we are living through a lot of stress and and these stress are you know it could be a stress on the road driving to work we can get a lot of stress driving to road because a lot of time there's lots of traffic if you're with the traffic and you can have also the stress of um like the people at work you might not get along with everyone you might be apprehensive of meeting that that person that's in the cubicle beside you and is like, oh, not again, you know, like, and then you go to stress or the stress of preparing a presentation or, or the stress of having to pay your bills or the stress of the kids, right, that are going through stuff and you got to carry down on your shoulder and the stress, like, you, of, you know, everything in the relationship with your husband or, or your spouse, you know, like all these stress build up and it's like, one after the other and eventually you're you kind of get lost in your bath of emotion because you're on a roller coaster right you just go up and down because you have all these bombarded emotion that gets at you and as you said it's uh, and that's one benefit of meditation is just it doesn't have to be an hour laying down in the room and all that it's just take take 10 minutes you know, sit down and connect with yourself and say, okay, how, and in the morning, it's a good thing to do is how do I want my day to go? Mm -hmm. How do I want my day to move forward in my day? And what type of experience do I want to experience? Uh, what type of people do I want to meet? How do I want to be supported? Who do I want to support? And if you start your day with that positive mindset into just to think about it, 
will make a huge difference because too many people are just on autopilot. They just go and go and stress over stress, over stress, over stress, over stress, you know, and they don't stop. They don't think about how do I want to live my life? And I appreciate you said that, like taking, taking a moment and do a checkup, you know, internal checkup of emotion. It's like, okay, what do I, what am I experiencing right now? What's going on with me right now? Yeah. I think it's essential. For sure. And, and Denise, thank you for sharing that. that. That was some amazing coaching you did right there. <laughs> you should charge for that segment. Um, but, but yeah, you're absolutely right. I think, um, you know, taking a moment to check in with yourself is really critical because at the end of the day, like we said, you know, you are the, the, the anchor, right? Okay. To all the other relationships, your business relationships and relationships in your personal life. So if you are burnt out and you're stressed out and you, you know, can't think straight and you're constantly on autopilot, how can you show up as the best version of yourself? It's important. Right? How, exactly. How so can I'm you so be the best parent? How can you be the best employee or employer or the best spouse? You know, like how do you, do you show up in your relationship and, and expect to have an amazing relationship if you don't show up? Oh, absolutely. I, I literally just, um, you know, wrote an article uh, this morning that that uh, that came out on LinkedIn uh, and also on my website. And uh, the article, you know, is is really focused on um, the the little changes, the little things that you do, okay, um, that have a massive impact in the long run. Mm -hmm. So here's here's the thing: for most people, when you talk to them, they say, "My highest priority is my relationships," or "My highest value is love." Okay. And for, for people who are here with us, maybe, you know, that that's true for you. You know, that's great. If, if it is, I think that's fantastic. I'm, I'm not against that, but I tell you what, you show me your calendar and I will really truly show you what your true priorities are. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are they really your relationships? Is your highest value really love? Yeah. Cause your calendar, your schedule actually reflects that. Yeah. If so it's if love and relationship, you should have, breakfast with my spouse and children you know like dinner and dinner dates and you know like oh, weekend yeah. away or whatever that is right like it should show and if you don't plan that if you don't put it as you think your values are and you don't apply it in your life it's not gonna it's not gonna work out for sure yeah absolutely and so there there is needs to be some time built into your schedule into your calendar where you are working on yourself right so that's your personal time uh you know your like you say meditation um or you know you you might be doing something that's your hobby or uh, uh interest that you pursue you something to actually rejuvenate yourself yeah but your ca calendar also need to reflect if, if love is your actual highest value and your your highest priority is your relationships with your family and your friends and and, and other people then your calendar needs to reflect that yeah right okay and so i really want to stress this i want people to think about it you know what what does your calendar show right now mm. right what does your calendar show right now um and that's a big question you know that's yeah. a big question to ask what Absolutely. am i doing on a day-to-day -day basis what what where, 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 what am i building you know what am i working towards at the end of the day because you can of course you need to work on your business of course you need to work on your career of course you need to do all the daily chores and pay the bills and you know walk the dog or whatever else you need to yeah, do yeah, yeah. of course you need to do that okay but the thing is you need like you say you need to give that that the that, the priority the mm -hmm. focus on actually on your relationships okay yeah. because if you don't show up the over time okay so here's here's, here's the thing so th this is pretty much a quote from from the um article that i wrote and it's this it's not one wrong thing okay maybe it's not two big wrong things maybe it's not even three big wrong things that will make the people in our lives leave us but it is those little 500 very small almost insignificant things over time yeah that will make them leave us totally agree with that absolutely so ponder so, upon that people yeah yeah exactly <laughs> every right. single action that we take is is for me i love to to say this is that benefit me or does that the opposite benefit like that does is it a nuance or is it a benefit like i and if it's not a benefit in a sense of my relationship my work and all that well i 
you know, of course, sometimes you do it. But the, the, the best answer is like, yeah, I want to do this because this is in the path of where you need to go. Yeah. And to question these little moments for sure. Absolutely. Like I love to give that example of um, because in, you know, emotional triggers are, are I work a lot with the triggers, right? The mind and rebuilding the mind. And I said, there's an action and a reaction. And then there's an action that you that are that is happening and you have a reaction. And for example, let's pretend the little action of the people you're with. So let's say your husband leave it sucks on the, on the floor, right? You could, as an individual, you could choose to get upset every time he leaves his, his socks on the floor. And, or you can choose to have a conversation with the person, or you can choose to ignore it, or you can choose to, there's lots of choices that can affect you in different ways or not affect you. But on the other hand, being the husband leaving the socks on the floor, these are the one of a hundred, 500 things that you do that are building up and building up and building up and building up. So you need, I think the best way is to not be shy to have a conversation about these things, whether somebody does something to you that's minuscule that is bugging you, but to talk about it and to resolve it so it doesn't happen again. And the person that is receiving the comment to be open to see something else, to be open to the conversation and see, um, let go of the ego and look and not be so selfish and look, okay, how does that make you feel? Okay, when I leave my socks on the floor, for me, it's like no big deal. I get undressed, leave the floor, grab a shower. But if it hurts you, and if I know that it hurts you, why would I keep doing that? Mm. Right? Like if you're able, if, if people were able to actually talk about their feelings without the emotional roller coasters, right? And just being able to not be confrontational, confront, confrontational, but be able to have straight conversation about how they feel, what they experience, especially in relationship and in business too. Like sometimes there's business deal that goes sour because of lack of communication, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I love how you put it there, Denise. And I, you, I love the examples that you shared as well. That was fantastic. Um, and um, what, what I would say is that both in life and in business, um, you know, when you have relationships with people, the biggest thing, and, and the, 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 this is just something that I absolutely truly believe in to my very core, the number one thing that both people need to have in order to actually go into a relationship and make it successful is a growth mindset because you hear these things about like you know um uh, accept me for who i am or love me for who i am and uh, you know um if, if he if he or she truly loves you then they will love you for truly who you are or uh, you know um we um we, we we're, we're going to actually um you know love each other for you know as we are things like that okay all right so I, I get all that. It, it, it's great. It sounds fantastic. It makes you feel all fuzzy and fluffy and warm inside. And I love that. Okay. It melts me inside too. I get it. Here's the thing though. Over time, everybody changes because life has different, you know, expectations of yeah. you. You have to change to in order to actually survive and live through life and be successful. Right? So yeah. people change over time. That's inevitability. Okay. So, the mindset of like, you know, I, I have to be in this relationship uh, and they have to accept me for who I am and I have to accept them for who they are, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's just not going to work. Not going to work for you. <laughs> no, because you're both going to change over time, whether that's a business relationship or, or a personal yeah. relationship. Yeah. You are both going to grow. You're both going to change over time. That's an inevitable. So the thing is that if you have a growth mindset, then you actually are understanding as the other person changing what's going on why are they changing and then what you need to do in order to support them what you need to do in order to actually keep up and what you need to do in order to make sure that your relationship stays secure mm -hmm. right because like the sock example the sock is the problem not the relationship but most of the time the relationship becomes the problem which is yeah. actually fine. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the relationship. It's that leaving the sock that's the problem. 
But then yeah. when you start to actually, you know, look into it uh, uh, with the with the mindset of like, no, he must not love me, which is why he's doing this. And, you know, no. she, she why she keeps badgering me for my socks, they're only socks or whatever, you know, you're going through. Yeah. Well, yeah. then it's yeah. becoming a problem because now you're putting the relationship, yeah. you know, on the, on the rocks. What you need to do is just deal with the sock. The socks on the floor, they don't belong on the floor. What can we do about it? Can we do this? Can we do that? Okay, let's put on a strategy. Let's put on a program. You put some steps in. You practice it. This didn't work. Can we try something else? Sure, exactly. let's try something else. Communication, right? Like growth mindset, right? You're both yeah. talking. You're both growing. You're not stuck. You're not like yeah. you know the relationship is staying secure. So for me, that's a big thing. For me, that. it's a really big thing that relationship is not affected. We deal with the problem that's in front of us, and we just deal with the problem. Okay. It doesn't yeah. affect the rest of the relationship. Yeah. Whether that's business relationship or relationship in your personal life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. And, and that goes because sometimes you have a conflict and then someone say, yeah, but six months ago you did this, you did that. It was like, why didn't you talk about it six months ago? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's behind us now. I forgot all about it. And, you know, don't. So people will end on that. Resolve your conflict right away. Have decent adult conversation. Don't bring your emotion with you. And if you have any problem about not bringing your emotion with you and have decent conversation, talk to Talal and I. We'll assist you. We'll coach you. We'll show you how to have good communication, how to build your relationship so that your relationships are staying strong. And, and I have here um two links that i'll share in the chat and in uh, this gonna go on youtube on my youtube channel so to pre-order the book then we'll have it's tur turbocharged networking.com but i'll put that in the chat and uh, and then his email is turbocharged networking at gmail.com and linkedin is talal.gondal so um so i'm I'm so happy that I had that. I, can you believe it? Almost uh, an hour, 45 minutes we've been chatting. So it's such a pleasure to get to discover you more and to get to know you more and to, and I hope we were able to help some of the people that were listening today. And when you listen to this, if you want to put a comment into the chat or say hello, or if you have any question, you'll have Talal's email, you know, to reach me because I'm the one posting this. So you can also message me. And, um, and Talalo, thank you so much for, uh, do you have any last word you'd like to share with people? Uh, yes. So the last thing that I, I really want to share with people is that I, I wonder how many people here right now would know the number one thing that really helps you, um, or I should say abs is actually absolutely critical, um, in building long-term deep authentic meaningful relationships both in personal life and in your professional life and that one thing is safety if you make other people feel safe around you and i mean emotionally safe right okay yeah. obviously we know about the physical safety right we know that i'm talking about emotional safety and this is something we touched about just before you know where we start wrapping up is the fact that you need to be able to have those conversations openly so I feel like every relationship will have a timeout clause built in that you as a timeout, this is time for us to actually, you know, stop everything else. And mm -hmm. this is an emotionally safe time for us to actually openly share what's going on. And we're going to only focus on the problem in front of us, not from the problem from six months ago, not the problem that's, you know, we're expecting to come up in two weeks, but actually the problem in front of us, timeout, yeah. let's no, okay, there's no sort of, um, you know, emotions attached to this at this stage, we're just going to deal with, you know, what, what, what are you experiencing? What are you going with right now? There's no judgment. We're yeah. just going to talk about the problem, what's in front of us. So safety is the number one thing. Emotional mm -hmm. safety is the number one thing. And I wrote an article about it a couple of weeks ago, I think, um, uh, which is on my website and on LinkedIn. But, you know, it's, it's making sure that other people feel emotionally safe around you. And if you can do that, you will experience blissful, deep, meaningful relationship, both in personal life and in your business life, because people are then able to move forward instead of actually get stuck by these little things, these little mosquitoes that keep coming and biting us, right? Okay. 
these little mosquitoes that keep biting us. But the problem is that over time, if you let them keep biting you, there would be no relationship left to protect. Exactly, exactly. Well, thank so, you so much. So Protect it from the mosquitoes. That's the final thing I want to share. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, thank you so much. Thank you everyone for uh, checking in, um, sharing a comment, say hello. And, um, and we're glad you're here. Tell us stay here. And we'll talk to you later, everyone. Goodbye.